Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to CM Worship for March the 5th, 2023. A warm welcome to everybody who's here at Gormley today. Okay, if you are at Gormley, I want you to uh, clap your hands, right? If you are at main campus, I want you to pat somebody on the back. All right, good job. All right, so let's all stand up and let's rise to worship the Lord together.
Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you, Lord, that you are an awesome God. Thank you that you are a God who is both powerful and merciful at the same time. We just pray that you would teach us how to uh, listen to you and to follow you uh, when you call us to do something and not to try to run away. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You're the reason we were made, you're the reason we are saved, you're the reason we can sing to God be the glory, you're the reason we can rise, you're the reason we're alive, you're the reason we can cry to God be the glory. All right, so boys and girls, uh, today we're going to learn about a story that has to do with a big fish and also a young man. Does anybody want to guess uh, who we're going to talk about today? Any guesses? Okay, I'm going to give you five seconds. If you know the answer, I want you to shout it out, okay? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, did anybody say Jonah? If you said Jonah, you are correct. We are going to talk about Jonah today. So how about we watch the Bible video, and let's find out more about what Jonah did when he tried to run away from God. God told the prophet Jonah, Go to the great city of Nineveh. Tell them to stop doing evil things. But Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were enemies of God's people. So Jonah got on a boat heading the other way. God sent a terrible storm. The sailors cast lots to figure out who caused this trouble. The lot fell on Jonah. The sailors asked Jonah, Who are you? What are you doing here? Jonah replied, I worship the one true God who made everything. Jonah told them to throw him into the sea. When they did, the storm stopped. From that moment on, 
the sailors worshipped the one true God. God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Jonah prayed and thanked God for sending the fish to save him. Then the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach my message. So Jonah went. He walked into the city shouting God's message, in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people turned from their evil ways. Even the king repented. God decided not to destroy Nineveh. Jonah was so mad. I knew it, he said. You are a gracious God. You show mercy to people. You are slow to anger, and you are loving. I knew you would decide not to destroy Nineveh. Is it right for you to be angry? God asked. Jonah made a shelter outside the city and waited to see what God would do. God taught Jonah a lesson. First, God provided a plant to shade Jonah from the sun. But the next day, God sent a worm. The worm attacked the plant, and the plant died. Then, God sent a dry east wind. Jonah was so hot, he almost fainted. God asked Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? Yes, Jonah said, I am so angry I could die. God said, you cared about the plant, but you did not take care of it or make it grow. It only lasted one day. Nineveh is a big city with thousands of people. I created them and care about them. Aren't they and the animals in the city more important than a plant? God called Jonah to go to his enemies and call them to turn away from their sin. But Jonah refused. Instead, he ran away. Later, God sent Jesus to his enemies to call us to repentance. Jesus willingly obeyed. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin. Okay, welcome back. Uh, in our Bible video, we learned that Jonah had some good moments and some bad moments with God, okay? Uh, so uh, there, there, we know that Jonah was trying to run away from something, and let's talk about that in a little bit. Has anybody ever tried to run away from home before? I know as a kid you might think, why, why would I run away from home? Uh, I actually tried to run away from home when I was six years old because I didn't like what my parents decided on something. And so I decided I was going to run away. I was going to pack my knapsack and I was going to run away. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't have any money, so I didn't get very far, okay? But I did try. And so for, the, uh, for about 30 minutes, I tried to run away. And then after that, I decided I don't know where I'm going. So I, I went back home. So that was the end of my runaway trip. Well, Jonah is an adult, so he tried to run away from someone. You guys know who that was? He tried to run away from God, right? And so he ran away from, the, uh, from doing what God had asked him to do. He was, uh, he, uh, God told him to go to the Ninevites to tell them uh, to repent so that uh, God would not destroy uh, their city. Jonah did not want to do that because the Ninevites were wicked people and he did not want God to be merciful to them. Jonah decided he was going to run away and go in the opposite direction of, a, of where God wanted him to go. Uh, for those of you who know this story, did it work? Was Jonah able to run away from God? Not very far and not for very long, right? So Jonah comes up with this plan. He decides he's going to Tarshish instead of Nineveh. Take a look at this map and you'll see that uh, Tarshish and Nineveh are in two different directions. Okay, so he gets on a boat, and then they start to, to sail towards Tarshish. Um, but then they, a big storm comes that God has caused, okay? And the sailors are being thrown, over, thrown uh, all over the ship, uh, but Jonah is sleeping, okay? And then jo uh, after casting lots, they realize it is Jonah who is responsible for this storm. And Jonah also realizes this is God's uh, because he is disobeying God, this is God causing the storm too. So he tells the sailors to throw him overboard and so that the storm will stop and the sailors will be saved. So that is what uh, he did. Uh, they, the sailors cried out to Jonah's God saying, hey, have mercy on us because we're going to throw this guy overboard. Uh, we, d we will not be responsible if he dies, but we want you to, to know ahead of time 
that we're doing this and be merciful to us. Okay, so they throw him overboard and what, what happens? He gets swallowed up by a big, big fish. And he ends up being in the belly for three days. So uh, this is point number one. Jonah actually received compassion from God uh, when he was swallowed up by the big, big fish. And although God could have let him drown in the sea, he gave him a second chance. He had compassion on him by giving him a second chance, by allowing him to think about things for three days in the belly of a fish. So let's think about it for a minute, kids. What do we think would be in the belly of the fish with Jonah? Does anybody have any guesses? All right, I'm going to give you a, a list of uh, different things that could be in the belly of the fish with Jonah. Okay, so there could be algae there. There could be little fish or little plankton there. There could be insects there. There could be worms there. Or there could be all of the above. All right, kids, if you had to choose one choice, which one would you choose? Okay, well, I guess it seems, seems pretty obvious, right? Um, well, actually, all of the above uh, might have or could have been in the belly of this big fish because the fish needs to eat things in order to survive, right? So depending on the fish, Jonah was with all these things all combined together. He was probably sleeping with these things at the same time, okay? But, and, but the good thing is that uh, when Jonah was in the fish, he started to pray to God and to worship God because he realized what God was doing and he cried out to God uh, for help. So point number two is this. We know that eventually God is also going to be compassionate to the Ninevites. In our Bible video, we saw that, that Jonah eventually went to, to Nineveh to tell them that the city would be destroyed in 40 days if they did not repent. And the people automatically uh, started to wear burlap and uh, they fasted and prayed uh, to show that they were sorry for what they had done. And did God change his mind? He certainly did. And uh, he saved them from destruction. So our final point uh, today is this. Because God shows compassion to us, we should also show compassion to others. So uh, what does compassion look like? I guess, uh, first of all, we need to figure out what is compassion, right? Compassion is trying to meet the needs of somebody who is hurting. So there are many different ways that we can show compassion and kindness to others, especially at school. So let's start with uh, school. So let's say if someone is lonely at, uh, at recess time or at lunchtime, they're sitting by themselves, uh, they don't seem to have many friends, what could you do if you were to show compassion to that person? Well, maybe you could go and sit with them, right? That would be an act of compassion. Or let's say somebody forgets their lunch at home and they don't have a lunch to eat or they forgot their snack or something like that. How would you show compassion to that person? Well, you might uh, uh, ask the teacher if you could share your snack with them or, or give a snack to, to that kid, or you could ask the teacher if they have any snacks that they could give to, to that child, okay? Or let's say there's a kid and he, um, uh, he, he or she, uh, all, all the stuff of their knapsack falls down on the ground by accident. Okay, and then uh, it's almost time for them to go to class. So if you had compassion on this kid, what do you think you would do? Well, you might offer to help them, right? You might offer to pick up their stuff and help them put it back in the locker or help them to go to class so that they wouldn't be too late. So these are some examples of what you could do at school when uh, there are people who need help and that are hurting. So let's think about how could we be compassionate at home? So let's say if your parents look really, really stressed out, uh, they have lots to do, um, and maybe, uh, so rather than bugging them, you know, and asking them for all the things that you need, maybe you could go and read a book quietly in your room. Or let's say your younger brother or sister um, needs help tying their shoes or something like that, okay? Or, or, or you're grabbing something from the uh, top shelf then what do you think you could do? Uh, you could definitely help them, right? So this is just some examples how you could be compassionate to your parents and to your brother or sister at home. So compassion is something that we can offer to others, right? So when I think about compassion, I think about two questions. One, 
is that what do they need? Okay, and question number two is this, what can I do to help? So after I ask myself the question, usually I know what I need to do. So uh, kids, uh, let's remember the three points together. One, God was compassionate on Jonah. Uh, point number two, God was compassionate on the Ninevites after they repented. And finally, God, the God of compassion wants us to be compassionate to others. Uh, so let's look for ways that we can be compassionate to those around us. Okay, let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you that you are a compassionate God. And uh, oftentimes you offer compassion to us, even when we don't deserve it. Teach us how to, to look for ways to be compassionate to others, especially when they are hurting or they need help. Um, and help us to offer it to them too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's uh, stand up for the benediction for today. Now may the God of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Have yourself a wonderful week and see you next Sunday. You're the